it's plumber tom don't forget to check in the comments below for a link where you can find additional resources like practice tests and courses that you can take your support helps me to be able to create more great content thanks for watching Hello, welcome to this presentation of International Fuel Gas Code Chapter 5. My name is Thomas, and in Chapter 5, we're going to be studying chimneys and vents. During this presentation, we're going to cover Section 501 and 502, and that's going to give us kind of an introduction and some of the basic stuff that you need to know when you're installing vent pipe for gas firing appliances. We'll start off in 501, and as usual, we find the scope of the chapter explained at the beginning. 501.1 states that this chapter is going to cover the installation, maintenance, and repair, and the approval of chimney liners, vents, and connectors specifically for gas-fired appliances. So that's exactly what we'll be looking at. Of course, every gas appliance is going to need some way to get the exhaust out. And these chimneys, liners, vents, connectors, they're all essential to getting those gases safely outside the building. 501.2 states that every appliance shall discharge products of combustion to the outdoors. That's the ideal. And it's kind of rare that we have an appliance, a gas-fired appliance, that doesn't have some way of getting the exhaust outside. There are a few exceptions, but generally the goal here is as we're having that combustion take place, let's get all of those gases outside of the building so that we don't have risk of carbon monoxide or other dangerous gases building up inside of the building. 501.3 talks about masonry chimneys and gives the requirements, or at least points us in the direction for the requirements on a masonry or a brick chimney. We don't build those as plumbers, but we do connect to them. And it says, go look at the International Building Code. 501.4 talks about the minimum size of those chimneys. And we're going to look all about sizing in this chapter. That's section 503 and 504. It's going to really detail that out for us. 501.5 talks about abandoned inlet openings. So if we have a bent and we're going to take something off, uh, here's a great example. For many years, the venting systems included the furnace and the water heater. It was draft vents, that would be category one, and it would just draft out the roof. Well, as furnaces have gone to high efficiency, nowadays most of them are all being installed, high efficiency, PVC venting flues. Another example will be if we take a draft vent and replace it with a tankless water heater. We're not gonna be using that draft vent connection anymore. So what happens when we remove an appliance? You obviously can't just leave a vent pipe wide open to the house. This section of the code says, if you have an abandoned inlet, then the openings shall be closed by an approved method. Uh, just putting some tape over it is probably not enough. You want to have an actual cap or a plug like this. Stick that into the vent. Screw it in place so it's secured. Taping over it's great. Seal it up as much as possible. The idea being, we don't want any opening where gas could get into the building. 501.6 addresses positive pressure. And we looked at this in our introduction to the fuel gas code, especially as we're looking at this chapter. This is particularly our category four appliances, high efficiency furnaces and tankless water heaters that are pushing the exhaust out. It says positive pressure where an appliance is equipped with a mechanical force draft system and creates a positive pressure in the venting system, the venting system shall be designed for positive pressure applications. There is a difference in the vent piping between a draft vent and one used for positive pressure. And the difference, main difference, is that anything for positive pressure has to be completely sealed up. PVC piping, when it's glued, is completely sealed up. There should be no cracks, no leaks, no nothing a totally sealed up pipe, right? But think about a draft vent. We just push those crimped ends into the other end of an open fitting or a piece of pipe and screw them together. It's not totally sealed. And you can put a little tape over it, foil tape or something to seal that. But, but really, for the most part, those are not ready for pressure. I mean, you start, you put a fan on there, start blowing on it. It's going to leak gases out everywhere. And that's one of the big differences we have to understand about venting is that some of the piping 
is rated just for those negative pressures where it flows out. The hot air rises and flows out of the building. Other piping, if we're doing positive pressure and blowing that with a fan, is going to push against the walls of the pipe and it has to be sealed up so that none of that gas can get out inside of the building. 501.7 refers to connections to the fireplace and gives several other particulars, closures and access, connection to factory built fireplace flue, and connection to masonry fireplace flue. Once again, the primary goal with all of this is to keep any of those gases from coming out into the room, and that's what's stated in closure and access. A lot of these are direct vents, so they're gonna draw air in from the outside. They will emit those combustion products outside through that direct vent piping. But we gotta make sure that these fireplaces are connected and correctly according to the manufacturer's recommendations so that we don't have gases coming into the building. 501.8 talks about appliances that are not required to be vented. In 501.2, we observed that most of these appliances should be getting that exhaust out of the building. But there are the exceptions, and here they are. This will make sense as you think this through. Number one, a gas range. It's in the kitchen. We don't have a pipe that runs outside from that. It's going to burn some of the oxygen in the air, but it doesn't need a vent going out. Built-in domestic cooking units, hot plates and laundry stoves. How about this? A type 1 clothes dryer. Some dryers would not require to be vented, and they are gas appliances. Single booster type automatic instantaneous water heaters. Refrigerators. Some refrigerators actually operate on gas and would not need to be vented out. Counter appliances, room heaters, direct fire makeup, air heaters, other appliances for unvented use, and specialized appliances of limited input, such as laboratory burners. So you can kind of see all of these fit into this category of we're not burning up a whole lot of oxygen in the space. Uh, we're using them for specific purposes to heat something or dry something. And for those reasons, we don't have to have vents connected to those. Now, this series of sections in 501, uh, they're in here. I'm going to just buzz through the section headings because, again, this presentation is going to be focused on, you know, plumbers and what plumbers need to know. And there's some of this that's less useful to us. So just be aware that this information is in these sections. Uh, 501.9, chimney entrance. 501.10, connection to an exhauster, 501.11, masonry chimneys, 501.12, residential and low heat appliance flue lining systems, 501.13, category one appliance flue lining systems, 501.14, category two, three, and four appliance venting systems, and 501.15, existing chimneys and vents. And when it comes to existing chimneys and vents in 501.15, 15, we get a little more specific. And again, plumbers aren't going to go build a brick chimney, uh, we, but we may connect to those. And for many years, and we're talking like a lot of years ago, that's how venting was taken care of. Like they'd build a chimney and appliances would just dump into that. Anymore, it's all, we, just, we run pipe. And I'll, I've run pipe through a chimney. You know, if that chimney's not used anymore, I'll go and run some PVC, direct vent flue or whatever, right through a chimney. Here's one uh, requirement on masonry chimneys. Good to be aware of. They are required to have a clean out. The clean out has to have a minimum height of six inches. The upper edge of the opening shall be located not less than six inches below the lowest inlet opening of the chimney. And the clean out should be provided with a tight fitting non combustion cover. So if you ever see these chimneys, notice that. You know, you can open up the little door at the bottom, it's a clean out. And of course, a chimney is going to be exposed to everything outside, so dust, debris, whatever can fall into there. But this is to keep all of that from landing right in the appliance. And that's a really useful thing. Let's move on to 502.1. And this gives us some general information about the vents themselves. Here's where we start to narrow down our view of what is okay for a vent pipe. And so we, we start with vents. First of all, they have to be listed and labeled. Um, if we're going to connect a gas appliance to a piece of pipe, it can't be just any old piece of pipe or whatever we feel like putting in. These have to meet certain standards, and those standards are going to be listed and labeled. Now, type B and BW have to meet the UL441 
listing. But again, that's going to be a manufacturer spec that says, hey, if you're going to make type B vent, at the very least, it has to look like this or meet these standards. So manufacturer is going to meet that and a third party certification company is going to come in and verify. And then those products can go to the market. Now, when it comes to category two and four, that's where we see this UL 1738, which is a standard for PVC that's rated for hot gases. Now, in our introduction to this chapter, I mentioned the importance of using a specific PVC for these gases. Now, category four, if we're looking at a tankless water heater or a furnace, the flue exhaust really isn't that hot. It's not really that wild. And that's why you can use a plastic. But PVC, standard schedule 40 PVC, if you look at the manufacturers, uh, look at any of them. They're not designed or rated to handle hot gases. They can hot handle liquids. You know, they're great for drains, whatever. But when it comes to flue exhaust, those gases have a different effect on the PVC pipe, uh, especially because they're hot. So that pipe is going to go through a lot more of expansion and contraction. That can cause joints, a lot of stress, and over time, those joints can crack and break. So this pipe has to be able to handle that sort of extreme, right? Higher temperature gases with different chemicals in those gases and the expansion and contraction. That's what this UL 1738 is all about. And we're going to see that throughout the rest of this chapter five. Anytime we're talking about running PVC venting for a category four or a high efficiency furnace or water heater, this is what's going to be specced out, and it's got to be that type of pipe. 502.2 talks about vent connectors and where they're required. It says connectors shall be used to connect the appliances to the vertical chimney or vent. So that's the whole purpose of a connector is to get from that appliance. I got a water heater here in this picture. And the vent is what's coming down out of the roof. Now notice, if you look close here, the vent coming out of that roof, there is a B vent. It's a double wall. And that's going to be useful for getting up through the rest of the building, passing combustibles uh, in a way that's safe. But in order to connect to that, you see we have this flex connector. This is actually rated for use here. Uh, it's provided with the manufacturer, so it interlocks to that 90 at the bottom. But that connector is specifically for the purpose of getting the gases from the appliance up into the vent. 502.3 says vent application, and all it's doing is pointing us forward in the chapter to a table 503.4. So we're going to cover this in the next presentation. But just know when it, when it comes to the application of vents or knowing which vents would go with which appliances, we're going to cover that thoroughly in 503.4. Let's look at 502.4. This talks about an insulation shield. What we're dealing with here is the fact that these vents are going to have to get to the outdoors and a lot of times they're going to pass up through attics or other spaces that are insulated. And that insulation needs to be kept back away from the vent. We don't want it piling up against it, either being damaged or even getting burned. So to keep all of that back, there's a specific requirement about how we handle the vent as it passes through insulation. This requirement states there has to be an insulation shield and that shield has to be constructed of steel having a minimum thickness of 0 0.0187 or 26 gauge. And from there, that shield is designed to create a certain clearance between the vent and the insulation material. The clearance shall be not less than the clearance to combustibles specified by the manufacturer's installation instructions. So we look at what type of vent is this, and therefore, how far away from combustibles will that need to be? We're gonna look at that later in this chapter as well, and the combustion clearances. Depending on the pipe, we may have to have more space away for one pipe than another. But they're all gonna need that space, so you put the shield in there, providing that space. The shield then has to come up two inches above the insulation level so that none of that insulation could be blown into there, come over the top. We just keep it all down and away from that flue pipe. 502.5 talks about installation, 
says that flue pipe has to be sized, installed, and terminated according to the requirements in the code here and manufacturer's installation instructions. Are you noticing that? So often, code is referring us to manufacturer installation instructions. And I should point out that when it comes to flue pipe, that is going to be particularly important for us to be aware of. If you haven't installed a certain flue pipe before, make sure to look into what are the specifics. Uh, clearance is an, is an example of that. How far away does that have to be from combustibles? What sort of ways did this connect or interlock? Or what other requirements does the manufacturer have in order for this to be installed in a safe way? So we follow those instructions, right? And then, of course, they refer us again to Section 503. Guess what? There's a lot in 503 that we're going to learn. And that's why throughout this first part of Chapter 5, they keep pointing us over there. For more information, hey, let's go to 503. We'll get there soon. 502.6 talks about the supporting events. Just like any other pipe that we're going to install, it has to have proper support. It says all portions of the events shall be adequately supported for the design and weight of the materials employed. Chapter 3 in this book gives us hanger and support spacing, so some of that might apply depending on what type of vent pipe we're using. Otherwise, manufacturer's installation instructions would also possibly provide information about how these are to be hung and how often supports should be installed. So that completes our presentation for section 501 and 502 from the International Fuel Gas Code. Join me in the next presentation. We're going to 503. Be excited. This one has a lot of useful and important information. I'll see you in that presentation.